Thanks for joining us here at QSAC for our first press conference of the day. And it is with Cap Matilda's cap number 172, um, midfielder, well, now forward, Emily Van Egmond, um, and who is Australia's fourth highest capped female player of all time. M, um, getting into the quarterfinals, um, last time was 2015. How are you feeling about this match against France? Yeah, I think, you know, it's a credit to the group. Um, to get here in the first place, it's it's been an amazing journey so far. But um, ahead of us lies a challenge, but one that we definitely won't be shying away from. And I think we're all excited to to get out there and, and get the game going. For those who are new, um, please raise your hand, and a microphone will be provided to you to ask your question. If we can have first hands, great. Well, as I started with the million dollar question, we couldn't see training. Was Sam out there? Is she ready to start on Saturday? Yeah, Sam's here. She's in good spirits and for us as a team, it's it's awesome to to see her back and um just a huge boost for us now going going into the tournament. That forward mix, you've you played up forward since you went down and you uh happy to put your hand up to drop back to the midfield or the bench if, if she needs to come into our starting side. Oh, look, I think for any player in any situation, um, whenever called upon or whatever role they have to play, everyone's ready and that's just one of the the great characteristics about this team. Yeah, just at the back. Uh, this France side, of course, was so impressive against Morocco. What have you seen from them that suggests that you can get the better of them? Yeah, um, look, the French the French team is a very good team. Um, you know, they've got they've got a great coach now. Um, you know, they've got high quality players. But for us, the most important thing is is going into this game and, and focus on ourselves and, and controlling what we can and and sticking to our game plan. They, uh, when you played them before the tournament, uh, got a good look at them. Their coach said probably wouldn't have done it if they had my call, and he also claimed there might have been a bit of jet lag involved. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure for them, um, traveling from the other side of the world, it was a big adjustment. Um, and, you know, they're, they're friendly games. It's completely different to tournament football. So you never know if a team's showing all their cards or not. So for us, the most important thing is is going in and focusing 100% on ourselves. Just over in the front. Hello. Um, you mentioned that, of course, Sam was a huge boost now that she's back. But you guys have kind of found a rhythm. So how does adding a star like her back into maybe the starting lineup impact cohesion at all? Yeah, look, Sam's the best striker in the world. I think um, for us it's a huge boost. There's there's no other way to look at it other than it's a massive positive for us going into this big game. Just, um, um, Anne just mentioned 2015 being the last time you were in this situation in the World Cup tournament. Has the team had a chance to reflect on or think about the gravity of what's in front of you on, on Saturday in terms of the opportunity in front of you to book your place in your first ever semi-final at a World Cup? Yeah, I think obviously every single one of us, you know, has thought about a lot of things um, within this World Cup and the thought of a semi-final on the horizon is is huge. But the the one thing that we've really um, stayed true to ourselves was just focusing on the next game ahead. And I think the team's been absolutely tremendous within that. The mentality and the, the level of professionalism that we've shown around the camp has been second to none. And um, I think we we keep that same mindset going into every every game that we, we face. We talk about top spot, if that's right. We talk about support. I think every day we, there's something new and we get gets added. There's, there's a, a place that's watching on a, a big screen as what you just think, oh, this has been done and then they announce something, the government's announcing something or there's a new initiative every day and it just goes, goes from strength to strength. We found out that it was the most watched event on Monday night the other day. Do you just feel like this country right now is being gripped by Matilda's mania and, and with every tick that you pass in terms of winning a game Saturday, perhaps booking your place in the semi-final, like this country perhaps is being taken over by Matilda's mania? Yeah, the support um, that we've been shown has been um, world-class and, you know, it's definitely been an absolute honour every single time we've taken the field to, to play in front of friends, family and um, the nation and for us it's about inspiring um, the next generation of players as well and the, and the nation really coming together, which they have. And, you know, to get 75,000 out at the last game was was huge for us. And, 
yeah, it definitely doesn't go unnoticed. Um, it's an amazing atmosphere every single time we step out on the field and um, we just we we just hope that Saturday we continue that and, it you know, it, it really is like a 12th man out there for us at times. Vince. And, and sort of like related, um, which is an AFL game on this weekend where they're actually playing your quarterfinal on the big screen before an AFL match happens in Melbourne. Like, is that, like, how is that happening? Yeah, look, it's just it just shows how far obviously the sport has come as a whole and um it's just terrific, you know, to to see the amount of support that we're we're getting and um yeah, it's amazing and for us, you know, we we obviously we are so thankful for it and again come Saturday we, we hope we get that support again and um yeah, we're we're excited for the game as well. Emily yeah, just on the 2010, you made your debut playing in front of crowds that you're, the crowds you're playing in front of now, the, the support you're seeing, AFL are moving games, putting it on the big screen. Your journey, you're, you're, you're most qualified to talk about this, the, just where you come from and where you sit now. Yeah, it's um, it's like chalk and cheese, obviously. my I think my first ever Matildas game, there was maybe, you know, a couple of thousand people in the stand and now we're talking about, you know, 75,000 to 80,000 people coming to watch us on home soil um, in the most prestigious tournament um, that there is for, for football. And it's amazing to see the young girls and even the young boys coming out and enjoying it and, and everyone getting behind the team. It's, yeah, it's it's honestly, it's unreal and it definitely doesn't go unnoticed by the girls and we just hope that it continues from here on out. And um, like I said before, we're just continuing to inspire the next generation. Oh, sorry. Yep. Hey, uh, I was wondering, who do you consider to be the favourite? The going to back ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, uh, last week in the Bamers, it's unfortunately your old family was there, and I assume they've been following you around the country and they followed you around the world, and most of the girls have had their family photos. And how much is that support? from your mum and your dads and your sisters and brothers and inspired you over your journey and to be the team that you stand for there. You know, we also see that Katrina's mum is almost an extra member of the squad as well, that support from the family, how important is that? Yeah, it's it's everything and to be able to play a home World Cup here in front of your friends and family, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um and it's been amazing. I'm I'm lucky and fortunate enough that my family is has been able to support me um from the very start till now and um yeah you know I'm just I'm so grateful for them and I'm grateful that they get to come out and watch us and um yeah they're they're our number one supporters at the end of the day and you know without that you know who knows got time for final three um I just want to ask everyone's been talking about the next generation and how you're so inspiring those young kids but we've also seen a lot of arrows in the crowd and we're seeing you know that low cost you know mental and emotional violence people as well how exciting is that to see the adults just being behind this team? Because obviously it's one thing to see kids when it's, you know, in their face and it's everywhere, but have adults when they make this decision to support this team, what is that, that like? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, every single person who, who takes the time to come out and support us, it's it's just, yeah, it's unbelievable and, yeah, it's definitely changed. I mean, it just shows, I think, how far the game's come and it, it shows, you know, still how much more potential there is and it's just awesome to see now, you know, everyone getting behind it and enjoying it and, yeah, we have we have the most amazing supporters here in the world. Looking back across the World Cup, um, is there a sense of frustration there's been so much focus on one player? I mean, we've done so much media on Sam Kerr, but the rest of the girls deserve probably more attention than they've got. Is there any frustration in that? I'd have to ask you guys. <laughs> You're the ones asking the questions. <laughs> Look, no, Sammy's it speaks for herself, honestly. We, you know, she's our leader. Um she's the best striker in the world, you know. She is an amazing athlete, but also she's equally an amazing person. And for us to have her back now, um, is huge. It's a massive boost. And um I think I mentioned it before, you know even her her work off the field in terms of leading the team um you know the things that you guys obviously don't see behind the scenes it's been immense for us and um the girls are just so excited to have her back and to have you know every single player stepping up and doing their role in quarter one final questions Jess just on that do you think do you think 
there be anyone in the team right now as much as more than Tony Christensen having um, nightmares about how he's going to keep a starting lineup or fit probably the world's best striker, as you said, back into this mix and keep the balance perfect because the Tillies are firing, as you said, and, you know, you don't, how do you not disrupt the balance but fit the best world's best – I'm sure she's in his ear all the time going, put me on, put me on, put me on, or I want to start. So do you think he's probably having – Kind of sleepless nights right now, or <laughs> I actually think he's probably sleeping better. <laughs> For him, it would it wouldn't be it's not a nightmare at all. It's a dream come true, honestly. And we're all just you know we're we're buzzing for her. We're buzzing for the team. And again, for us, the most important thing is the game on Saturday, and that's all we're looking forward to now. So, so yeah.